Hi, I'm Martin Sullivan and I'm going to be talking about a paper recently published in Methods and Ecology and Evolution written with co-authors Richard Davies, Luis Reno and Aldina Franco. In the paper we are looking at one of the key issues with modelling the species environment relationship of spreading species and that is the issue of dispersal limitation. In the paper we present a method to deal with the problem of dispersal limitation and we compare this method to uh, models that do not account for dispersal limitation. I work with non-native birds in the Iberian Peninsula, such as the black headed weavers that you can see in the nests just down there. So this site is obviously suitable for them. We might want to know which other sites might be suitable for them so we can model where they might spread to. The tool we typically use to answer this question is species distribution models. But one of the key assumptions of species distribution models is that the species being modelled is at equilibrium with their environment and this assumption is broken for spreading species. So I'll explore the consequences of this for uh, model fitting using an example of the expansion of the common waxball in the Iberian Peninsula. Since being introduced in the 1960s to Portugal the common waxball has spread um, through the Iberian Peninsula possibly aided by further introductions. When you use presence absence models to model distribution of a species, the models use environmental covariates in grid cells where a species is present and where a species is absent to try and distinguish between these. Um, but the problem here is that when a species is spreading, it may be absent from a grid cell due to either environmentally unsuitable conditions there or due to dispersal limitation. So I've just highlighted with the arrow a random point where wax balls are absent and we don't know whether this they're absent due to environmentally unsuitable conditions or due to dispersal limitation but this data point would go in as an absence to the species distribution model. You may well end up with a lot of grid cells where the species is absent due to dispersal limitation which actually have environmentally suitable conditions and having these in a pool of absences available to model fitting means that the model is, unlikely, is likely to fail to detect some genuine positive relationships with environmental variables. Another potential pitfall caused by dispersal limitation is where when you have a, an environmental variable which is um, strongly correlated with the axes of dispersal of a species, this environmental variable is likely to show a strong relationship with the occurrence of a species even if there's no causal relationship. In the paper we present a method to deal with dispersal limitation. We've called this method dispersal weighting. So what you do, you first fit a dispersal model to calculate the probability that a species has been able to disperse to each grid cell and then you use these probabilities to weight your species distribution model. So grid cells that are unlikely to have been colonized are down weighted. The model fitting procedure is then closer to the desired sort of equilibrium situation where the model is distinguishing between grid cells that are, um, so have suitable environmental conditions and grid cells where there are unsuitable environmental conditions. To see whether dispersal weighting actually improved model performance, we used both simulations and the example of Colin Waxball to compare dispersal weighted and unweighted models. And in the paper we go into the effect of uh, the spatial structure of the expansion variables on model performance. But I'll just show a couple of key results here. So one of the advantages of using simulations is that we know the true species environment relationship. Um, so for example, the relationship between this parameter and the occurrence of a species is shown by the solid line. So you can see that unweighted models underestimated the value of this parameter and this is probably because the um, environmental variable would have occurred with favourable values quite frequently in the pool of absences available to the model just due to dispersal limitation. You can see that dispersal weighted models produced much better parameter estimates and this was reflected in all the, any other simulation scenarios as well. Given that dispersal weighted models were better at parameterizing the species environment relationship, you might expect them to be better at classifying whether grid cells were occupied by a species or not. 
This graph shows the performance of dispersal weighted and unweighted models at classifying whether grid cells are occupied by a common wax ball. The models were constructed using climate variables and we've used AUC as a measure of model performance. The higher the value, the better the model is. And you can see that the um, unweighted models actually perform better than the weighted models. So this might seem somewhat surprising, but the thing to remember is that the predictions from these models are of the potential distribution of a species, not the current distribution of a species. So the dispersal limitation will prevent the species from occupying all potentially suitable areas, and the dispersal weighting models did predict larger areas that had yet to be um, dispersed to as being suitable. So to generate predictions of the current distribution of a species, you can actually incorporate dispersal information into model prediction as well as model fitting. So if you to for a grid cell to be occupied, it has to be dispersed to and it has to be suitable. If these probabilities are independent, we discuss this assumption a bit more in the paper, then you can calculate the probability that a grid cell is occupied by multiplying the probability this is suitable with the probability that it is dispersed to. We've called this weighted prediction. So when you use weighted predictions, dispersal weighted models perform better than unweighted models. You can interpret that as the dispersal weighted models were better at classifying the suitability of grid cells in areas where the species was likely to have already been able to disperse to. One limitation with our study is that the um, dispersal model used a dispersal kernel that did not vary spatially, when in fact dispersal may interact with environmental suitability. For example, dispersal may be faster along corridors of suitable habitats. Despite this limitation, in both the simulation and with the example of the common wax bill, models that used dispersal weighting outperformed models that didn't. So we'd conclude that if you have enough data to create a dispersal model, then it's really important to try and account for a dispersal limitation using methods such as the one we present in our paper. <laughs>